in this job, Bill, you're going 24 hours a day, seven days a week at about 150 miles an hour all the time. That's just part of the job. And after a while, you get used to that, and you don't realize sort of that stress level or that speed that you're operating in until every once in a while when you get away on a vacation or something and, uh, and you start letting down, you know, your motor starts turning off and you go, wow, you know, I, I didn't realize how uptight I was or whatever. And so it is going to be a change, I think, but it's going to be a welcome change. You know, Jane and I, uh, number one, we thank the people of, of this state for giving us the honor of being first lady and governor for eight years. It's, a, it's the greatest experience we've ever had in our lives. At the same time, the most challenging one we've ever had. But uh, it's time. You know, eight years is long enough uh, uh, to be in a job like this because you, you've gotten a lot of things done. But, you know, it's time for a fresh set of eyes. It's time for other people to come in and start hopefully building on what you've done. You uh, were so involved in public life uh, before you were elected. Uh, you had uh, held elective office. Uh, it it uh, was a situation where you were busy uh, before you knew how busy you were going to be. Um, as you look back at that, did, did you, is there anything about after being here for eight years that, um, that you thought was going to be different or that you, you, you were so much more busy than you thought or uh, when you first began office you had that uh, dark cloud of the recession uh, hanging over your head uh, that you didn't expect of course. Uh, uh, can you take us back eight years and, and sort of put us in that uh, place that you were in? Well Bill, you know we ran in 2007 and we had great ideas. Uh, we wanted to invest a lot uh, in early childhood ed education and development, for instance. And of course, that was going to be money uh, and a lot of other ideas like that. We came off the campaign trail after having won the election. Uh, we were sworn in in December. The next day, uh, my budget director met with me and said, well, I hope you enjoyed yesterday because uh, we're going to have to start cutting, I think, $340 million out of this budget. And Right then, the recession just hit us flat in the face. And boy, you talk about a tough time. Uh, everybody knows out here how tough it was because they went through it. They and their families sat around the kitchen table every night and tried to figure out how to make ends meet. And we did the same thing at the state government level. So it was kind of a survival mode for a while until you got your arms around it. And as you know, we balanced the budget 15 times, cut about $1.6 billion. Uh, so it was a tough time. But we made some smart decisions, I think, because we didn't cut everything across the board. We picked out our priorities of education and job creation, public safety. We kept those things intact. We had to cut everything else a lot more. But in the long run, we came out of it, uh, of that recession, I think a lot stronger and a lot quicker uh, than other states because we did it that way. And so as we started coming out, we had concentrated on job creation. Our economy started taking off. And as you know today, we've gone from 11% unemployment during the recession to now 4.9%. I mean, it's the lowest that it's been in anybody's memory right now. We got our people back to work for the most part. And, you know, our economy's going well. Uh, we've done a lot in education with not a lot of money, uh, but we held that intact. And so now we're the 10th state in the country in terms of graduation rates. Uh, our, grad, uh, our college and career readiness rate has gone from 38% to 62% in just four years. And then, you know, when you look at the health care situation where for the first time ever in our history we can say that every single Kentuckian has access to affordable health care, that is going to be a game changer in a generation or so in Kentucky. Six or seven years ago, you also had Mother Nature step in and uh, give you a, a couple of problems that you had to deal with that, of course, no one can predict or expect that. We've had, I've, I think it's 12 presidentially declared natural disasters since I've been governor. Mm. And of course, tornadoes, flooding, and all of this, but by far the biggest was the ice storm that hit us in 2009. And I mean, in, in, in a few hours, we had 110 out of 120 of our counties in a state of emergency. I mean, the electric lines were down, the telephone lines were down, the cell phone towers were down. Nobody could communicate. Nobody could, could turn on their ovens or anything else. I mean, people were in fear of their lives, and rightly so. Um, I called out the entire National Guard. 
uh, sent them door to door in all of our communities, just checking on people as we got the infrastructure slowly pulled back up. I mean, it was a scary time, but I'll tell you, we got through that, and I learned more about Kentucky's people, I think, in that disaster than any time before or since, and I learned that they're special. We take care of each other. And people came together and not only took care of their families and their friends and their neighbors, they took care of strangers. And people just put their arms around other people and, and helped everybody get through it. And that, that was a very special time. What was it about uh, some of those times and uh, what you learned uh, about people? Not just that they, uh, they work together, but are, are there any individual stories that you remember? Or maybe, maybe some of the first responders that worked a day and night for... Uh, days on end to uh, to try to help people. What are some of those uh, memories? Well, you know, uh, a memory came to me from history, really, when FDR led this country through the Great Recession. And I don't begin to compare myself with that great man, but the idea was the same, and that was, you know, they need to see you, they need to hear you, they need to know you care about mm -hmm. them, and if you can get to that point, they'll know they're going to be okay. And it was a psychological thing as much as anything. And so we were out all over the state. We were on local radio, any way we could communicate with people. And then we sent the National Guard door to door. And I, I heard later, uh, Governor, when I heard your voice on the radio, hmm. you know, uh, we knew we were going to be okay. When we saw the National Guard walking down the street, or we saw the Humvee go by, we knew we were going to be okay. Mm. 